Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to compare two fragrances from the house of Chanel, Coco Noir, Coco Mademoiselle. So I've got these two beauties here. They are both extremely popular fragrances. Why well, I would say Coco Noir is not as popular as Coco Mademoiselle. Obviously this being the number one selling fragrance for women in the entire world. This fragrance is a staple to have if you are a fragrance lover or if you're new to fragrance or you want something sophisticated, sexy from the house of Chanel, you definitely would be trying Coco Mademoiselle. But there's a better alternative, in my opinion. I think Coco Noir is a little bit better, a little bit more sultry, a little bit more sexy. And we'll get into the similarities of these two fragrances and see if they're worth it or if they're not worth it and which one is best for you. So starting off with the classic, this is Coco Mademoiselle. The packaging is the same thing that you would get with number five, the Eau de Parfum. It is that classic Chanel silhouette that we're all so comfortable seeing. Now, my bottle is old and you're probably like, what happened to the neck? Chanel doesn't do the best quality when it comes to their packaging. It's just a very cheap sticker. Because you're spraying alcohol and oils, this does tend to peel off. Just so you do know for the Eau de Parfum, the lid is frosted. If you do get the Eau de Parfum Intense, that one itself is going to be a regular transparent lid. And then Privé itself is a frosted bottle. So there are three iterations of this one, not including the other formulations as the Parfum or the Eau de Toilette, but this one itself, the Eau de Parfums, come in the silhouette, and this one itself has that frosted lid. Now, the lid itself is supposed to be modeled off of Place Vendôme, which is where Chanel lived most of her life, at least, at the Ritz-Carlton in Paris. So there's some history into this bottle. It's supposed to be cut like a gem. It's supposed to look like a lab sample, although I don't know what lab samples look like this, but it's supposed to look very simplistic and timeless, and it does do that well. So starting off with this fragrance, this fragrance is going to be a very intricate, delicate, but beautiful with some depth to it. This fragrance is just a masterpiece all around. I think a lot of fragrance brands have tried to recreate the popularity of Coco Mademoiselle, and they haven't been successful because Chanel does it so well. At least Jacques Polge did it very well, which is a perfumer of this fragrance. Launched in 2001, this fragrance has beautiful top notes of orange bergamot mandarin and orange blossoms. So you do get that very light citric airy type of quality to the top. Chanel fragrances overall, because they have the aldehydic type of blueprint that they all start off with, they kind of have this sparkly quality to them. You know, it's kind of like champagne. You have the bubbles rising to the top and you do get that in Coco Mademoiselle as well. Like I said, this is a trait with all of Chanel fragrances. Then in the middle notes, you're going to get Jasmine Mimosa Rose and Ylang Ylang. So that Ylang Ylang, I think, is the star of the show here. That rose is a very nice quality to it. But Mimosa adds this very different type of flirtiness to this fragrance, which is a very different key element in this. And that Jasmine just warms this fragrance up. I think it gives it that, you know, depth and sophistication that this fragrance is so well known for. Then it's basically going to get patchouli, vetiver, and white musk. These are beautiful notes. Patchouli really gives that, you know, earthy type of quality to it, which is going to ground this fragrance overall. The vetiver gives that very beautiful green element in this fragrance, although it's not going to be overwhelming. This is not a green scent by any means. Then you get tonka bean, which gives it that very soft, sweet type of smell to it, as well as opapakanax. Opapanax? I can't say the name of that note itself. And then you also do get vanilla in this fragrance, which is another one that's going to warm this fragrance up. Overall, I would say that this fragrance is a warm floral at heart. It does have sparkly qualities to it because of those citric notes that we started off with. But then you get those beautiful floral touches to this fragrance, you know, those very beautiful fruity type of vibes to it, but it's done well. Everything is very well aligned. Everything is, you know, working in cohesion together. You're not having one note in particular stand out and the rest of them be background dancers to it. This fragrance does a very good job of making everything work together in harmony, which is what this fragrance is known for. This is the reason why this is the number one selling fragrance. It is feminine, it is sophisticated, it is sexy, indulgent, but let me tell you one thing, there is a better alternative out there. And I think that Coco Noir is a little bit better to me. It's going to be more sexy, more refined. It's going to have more depth to it. And it's going to be a little bit more flirty, if you will, because it's going to be mysterious as well. Launched in 2012, this fragrance is my absolute, one of my absolute favorites, as I should say, of the House of Chanel. I think Chanel does a lot of really great fragrances. But this one adds an element, you know, where you have Coco Mademoiselle and it's a little bit more youthful. It's going to be a fragrance that's going to be, you know, more 
in your mid 30s or earlier and i think this one's going to be in your mid 30s or higher in age range i think this is the young woman that is you know discovering life and this is a woman that she becomes and i do think that this fragrance is absolutely gorgeous now the notes are not very different there are some variations in the notes itself the top notes for this fragrance are orange bergamot and grapefruit so you do get those zesty beautiful citric notes up top again you still get that beautiful sparkly quality to this fragrance although it's not as prevalent as it is in this guy here you will get that you know dna that is so well known for the house of chanel which is that aldehydic sparkly champagne type quality then in the middle notes you're going to get patchouli geranium rose and jasmine so you get that jasmine in here as well you get that rose in here as well they add geranium, which is a little bit different because in, instead of adding mimosa like they did in Coco Madozal, they added that beautiful element of geranium, which is also a floral note, but geranium is going to be a little bit more, instead of fruity, I would say, it's going to be more of a note that's going to be green because geraniums themselves are a little bit more raw. They're more plant-like, if you will, so they kind of have a very distinctive smell to them which really gives this one a little bit of a sharp edge to it then in the base you're going to get white musk sandalwood frankincense tonka bean and vanilla then they add frankincense to this fragrance here coco noir which is going to give you that depth that quality of being more mysterious you know more sexy a smokier type of fragrance it is essentially a smoky more deep version of coco mademoiselle I know that Coco Noir was originally marketed to be a, a flanker of Coco Dior de Parfum, but, you know, working for Chanel, it was always said that it was actually created as a flanker of Coco Mademoiselle, and, you know, it was going off of the success of this one. So they launched Coco Noir, which is supposed to be a deep, sexy, sultry version of Coco Mademoiselle, which makes more sense because if you actually put Coco Noir and Coco, you had to perform next to each other. These two share almost all of the notes, I would say, except, you know, Coco Noir does add a couple of different elements such as frankincense, sandalwood, geranium, and grapefruit, which are the notes that are, you know, different from this guy here. here. What do you guys think of these two fragrances? I certainly would say that if you were to tell me to pick one of them, I would probably pick Coco Noir because it's not everyone's going to be wearing it like they will be wearing Coco Mademoiselle. That's not to say that this fragrance is bad. It's just to say that this fragrance being number one seller, everyone knows it. Everyone probably wears it. Everyone probably owns it in their collection. And I think Coco Noir is grabbing this beautiful fragrance, adding some depth and some mystery to this fragrance, which is going to really make you stand out of the crowd. It's a little bit more serious though. So if you want something a little bit more playful, I would certainly say to check Coco Mademoiselle. If you want something that's more serious, more sultry and more mysterious, more seductive and for it to have depth i would certainly say to check coco noir because it is a masterpiece of a fragrance just so you do know these do have their own body lines i will say that the body cream for this is like chef's kiss it's a really great product it's you know very concentrated so if you are a fragrance lover that doesn't want to wear your fragrance all the time but you want to have some smell i would certainly say that the body cream for this one and for coco mademoiselle is good now, Coco Mademoiselle's body cream is not as intense as the one for Coco Noir. And let's just say that. Let's look at this beautiful bottle. I mean, it is iconic. It's the only bottle that is a solid color from the House of Chanel. The rest of the bottles, you can kind of see through them or see through them. And they did something different here, which is make that bottle non-transparent. So you do kind of have to, you know, shake it to see where your fragrance is at. That's not good for your fragrance, by the way, but you can shake it to see where it's at. Versus Coco Mademoiselle, you know, which is obviously a fragrance that you can see right through it. And it's the same thing with like number five and all those other fragrances. But I would certainly say that my pick is this one here. I do like Coco Mademoiselle. I do think it's a beautiful fragrance. It is iconic. It is very much loved and adored by everyone. But I do like my fragrances to have a little bit more depth, to be a little bit more different. And to, you know, really stand out out of the crowd because you are getting those beautiful notes that make Coco Mademoiselle so popular so loved but you're adding some touches to it that make you a little bit different i think that's what makes this fragrance a little bit more of a unique experience it makes it a little bit more comforting a little bit more more customizable and i definitely think that that is why i lean for this fragrance here and i would certainly say to check both of them out you know like i said if you're looking for a fragrance that is going to be 
younger, more youthful, check this one out or check out Coco Mademoiselle, the Eau de Parfum Intense. I do like that one better than the Eau de Parfum. And this one itself, if you are looking for something that's going to give you more mystery, more seductive. In other words, this is the girlfriend perfume. This is the breakup perfume where you have discovered yourself and you are going on a journey to be the free and empowered woman that you are. So definitely let me know what your guys' thoughts on both of these fragrances are down below. Also make sure to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more fragrance-related content. And I hope to see you on the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.